Hey Thomas from Field Tennis. If you're struggling with controlling your strokes, whether those are your ground strokes or volleys, you might be firing your strokes. That's how I call it when I see it. So when the player prepares for the stroke, they have a beginning, they start, and then they fire the stroke through the ball. So the stroke goes all the way through contact in one very fast motion and it's kind of only starting to break down very close to the follow through so whether that's forehand or backhand or something like that so there are two variations i will show them but the problem might be that you are firing your stroke instead of swinging in a controlled manner and directing the ball so there are two ways players fire the stroke let me show you the first one so the first way is that the player let's say especially forehand goes very fast to the follow through so, it, so they prepare the stroke and they go very fast to follow through whether they catch or does don't catch doesn't matter so much so they're here and then they fire through the ball compared to swinging through the ball and controlling their follow through so you can see that my follow through if i do the right way it's slowing down so players who fire the stroke they don't really think about slowing down the follow through so normal stroke has a certain control and slowing down and breathing in players who fire hit like this the other way that players do is when they fire they immediately relax so they're hitting the ball and for them the stroke is over when they hit the ball they feel oh it's it's over and so they have no no control of the follow through so the so the second type of players they relax after contact so again they prepare and then they fire the stroke and for for the player basically the stroke in their mind's eye their stroke is only from beginning whatever their backswing is so it's from beginning to contact and then they feel obviously the ball has bounced off so they feel okay the ball has bounced off so now it doesn't matter what I do, I should basically relax or maybe even the coaches told, tell them to relax or something like that. So basically they fire the stroke into contact in a similar way like a baseball batter hits the ball. So they hit the ball and it doesn't matter what the bat does after contact because their goal is basically to hit a home run. So they want to hit the ball as far as possible. And so they just want to get as much speed as they can on the bat and they whack the ball. So I would call that whacking. I think that's something that you can all relate to. What does it mean to whack the ball? And so players in tennis, they come with this mindset, with this picture that when they see the ball, they whack it. So when they whack it, they immediately lose control of their hand whether that's a forehand or backhand. So this is how a backhand would look like when players whack it. They hit the backhand and they, they have no more technique. So in their mind's eye, it doesn't matter because, because the ball is gone. And so these are two most common ways that players fire the stroke instead of execute it. So what I want to share with you today is that you shouldn't fire your stroke in most cases. If you're a junior or beginner or intermediate player only high level players can really fire the stroke and let go of the racket and still maintain control but any intermediate advanced level player has to control the stroke all the way through and and so the stroke is not in my mind's eye i don't fire the stroke from beginning to the ball but the stroke is the whole stroke lasts from start to finish let's say I'm catching the, the racket on the forehand so this is my stroke and the ball is not the end of my stroke like for players who feel whacking so when they whack the ball is at the end of their stroke for me the ball is in the middle of the stroke it's right in the 50 percent so I'm executing the stroke from start to finish the finish is here and I'm controlling my movements all the way throughout the stroke so after i feel that i've hit the ball and the ball has flown off i don't relax and i don't stop doing the stroke i'm still doing the stroke 
In fact, I'm doing it in a very controlled manner because I realize and players realize is that this control after contact actually helps you control the ball. Obviously, in terms of physics, it doesn't because the ball is away. But what matters is that if you have a mental image, a mindset that you're going to control the movements after contact, then you are controlling the movements much better while you're contacting the ball. And that's why you control the ball much better. And so my advice to you is that you shouldn't fire the stroke, you should execute it from start to finish and you should look to slow down the follow through. So I'm asking you to have complete control over your follow through so that you can do it here or you can do it here or wherever you want to do it. So you're hitting the ball and then you do very slow follow through. So the same on the back end, you hit and then you're doing very slow follow through and you feel all the time in control of the stroke. So you're doing the stroke from start to finish, whatever your technique is, if you start here or finish here, doesn't matter. But I'm asking you don't whack the ball or don't go very fast into the follow through. So the most common that is on the forehand when players are hitting like this and they go very fast to the follow through and they're not slowing down and controlling the stroke. So you will see that if you apply that, you will have much better ball control than firing the stroke. So you don't want to fire the stroke. You want to calmly execute and slow down the movements after the contact. And you will see that the strokes work much better. So again, this applies to forehands, backhands and volleys. So let me give you a few examples on the backhand. So how does the backhand look like when players fire it? It looks like this. So the preparation looks okay, but the follow through has no form because the player doesn't care about the follow through. They just want to whack the ball. So whatever happens with their arm, maybe they finish like this. So that means the player is firing the stroke, they're not guiding the ball. And so to hit it the right way, I'm slowing down the follow through and I control it. So I have acceleration into the ball and then I'm slowing down and I maintain technique. Why do I maintain technique? Because I'm not gambling, I'm not whacking the ball, I'm guiding the ball. I have a picture, okay, I want the ball to go there and I'm guiding it there with my racket and so that's why this happens so not whacking and letting go of technique and control but controlling just a few examples from the back view when players fire the stroke it looks maybe something like this or it looks like this they have no control so even I don't have control so there should be a controlled follow through, slow follow through, you can accelerate then you have to slow down. So a few backhand examples, when players fire their backhand, they have no control of their follow through, so they just hit and let go. But you should slow down, so you should control the stroke, you know where is the start, where is the finish and I'm going in a controlled manner into the finish. I don't relax at contact or let go. I guide the ball in the direction where I want. So the ball is in the 50% of my stroke. It's right in the middle. So the finish of my stroke is here. I know where is the finish. And I go in a controlled manner, slowing down, I go into the finish. So how does a forehand volley look like when a player fires it? So it's going to look something like this. So again, the player doesn't care about the follow through. Their follow through can go here. Their follow through can go down or something like that. So again, when we see no control of the follow through and very fast movements like this, like this, that means the player is firing the stroke rather than guiding and controlling it. So if I'm doing it the right way, then I am moving the racket from start to finish and the finish is not at the ball and I can relax, which is what players feel. But the finish is 
where I know where the finish is, so the ball is in the middle of my stroke, so it's in the 50%. So that's how you should visualize a volley, forehand and backhand, I'll demonstrate the backhand in a minute. So I am controlling the movements from start to finish and going through the ball. So here are a few examples of the backhand volley. So if players fire again, how do we know? Well, they have no control of the follow through. So the follow through will go in all sorts of ways. So they just go to the ball and either relax or go very fast to the finish wherever they think the finish is. So the right way is to control the volley from start to finish. So knowing where your finish is, I know it's there and I'm going in a controlled manner from start. I go through the ball to the finish in a very controlled manner. So that's the right way of picturing the stroke. So I am executing the stroke. I am not firing or whacking at the ball. So execute the stroke from start to finish. So a few volleys from the back perspective. So I'll start with the forehand volley. So when players fire the stroke, then they will do like this. They don't control the follow through, goes like this. So when I execute the stroke, then I control from start to finish and the ball is in the middle of my stroke. So I don't stop doing the volley. I don't stop doing and relaxing at the ball. I am constantly in complete control of my arm and I guide the ball towards the target with the strings of the racket. So same backhand. Players who fire the volley, they go very fast like this. They don't have control of the follow through. So the right way is to control the follow through and guide the ball in the direction where you want to send it. So again, the ball is in the 50% of my stroke. It's in the middle. It's not at the end. So again, players think this is the end and they relax. But I am doing in a very controlled manner the volley from start to finish and I control the ball really well like that. So what about the serve and the smash? I will demonstrate for the serve. Serve and smash are one of those two strokes where players most like to fire. So they, once they get going, where once the arm gets going, they can't stop it. So the serve might look like this. We can see very fast acceleration right into the follow through. So whatever their technique is, they go very fast in the follow throughs. Their picture of getting power. And maybe there's no guiding, no aiming, just looking for maximum power. And the player has this idea of whacking the ball. So can we whack the ball on the serve? Yes, on the serve we can whack the ball. But my advice to you would be the same like you should learn to crawl before you walk and walk before you run. So before you really fire the serve, I would like to see the player control it so that they have control of their arm. So if they choose to serve and stop their arm here, they should be able to do it. Or if they choose to slowly continue into the follow through, they should be able to do it. So I see many times when I ask players maybe to work on pronation or something else that they are completely unable to stop their arm because they generate so much momentum and they are used to this firing the stroke or whacking the ball. And so they don't really have good control of the serve. It's kind of really a lottery. And so again, my, my advice would be if you are one of the players who fires the serve or the smash, the same goes for smash. I see players, they're unable to slow down the smash. It always goes fast. Then it means you have a control problem. So I would suggest you learn to control the stroke and that you're aware of the follow through and that you're able to slow down the follow through if you want to. And if you're able to do that, then you gradually progress to faster speeds to acceleration. So again, the serve when you're working on the serve, you should be able to slow down your arm, slow down your follow through and be aware that you are in control of it. And once you're at that stage, then accelerate and see how it goes. So that's it for today. Thanks for watching and 
I'll see you next time.